بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله uh, This is section 1.8 Introduction to Linear Transformations uh, We will work with matrices here but as transforms or maps from one vector to another by matrix multiplication. So a matrix can transform a vector to another vector from space to another space. Uh, let us recall what we mean by r to the power n. We know that r is set of all real numbers. r2, if n is 2, we will have ordered pairs like 1, 2, 2, 1. And we say that it's an ordered pair because the order matters. So 1, 2 is different than 2, 1. 1 is the x coordinate, y is the 2, uh, 2 is the y coordinates here. In the second, 2 is the x coordinate, and y, 1 is the y coordinate. If n equals to 3, we call them n ordered trebles, and we have something like this. For example, this is in R3. So we can talk about R4, R5, Rn, if we have ordered n tuple. So if we have n components from x1 to xn, we call it n tuple ordered in tuple and we write it like this so rn would be set of all all ordered in tuples of real numbers so rn consists of all ordered in tuples of real numbers the elements of rn are called vectors you can call them vectors or points, okay? We call them vectors and we write them with bold face type like this. So for example, this point S1 to Sn, we can write it uh, like this uh, in this notation as a vector. Uh, this matrix, the column matrix represents the column vector. So we have two possibilities, either to write an element of Rn like this or like this. The two are okay, but here in form of matrices. Now, there are important uh, points or elements in Rn, and we will give them the names uh, we will call them EI. They are vectors from E1 to EN, where E1 is 1 in the first position and zeros otherwise. So the definition of EI, 1 in the ith position and zeros elsewhere. Those N vectors are very important and they are called the standard basis vectors for Rn. So from E1 to En, these N vectors are the standard basis vectors for Rn. For example, in R3, in R3, the standard basis vectors are these three vectors, E1, E2, E3. Uh, we usually call them I, J, K in R3. But to have notation for Rn, we call them E1, E2, E3. Why we call them standard basis vectors? Because any vector in Rn, for example, x1 to xn, this one, this vector, can be represented uniquely in one way as a linear combination of these n vectors. So we can write x, the vector x, as 
x1 e1 plus x2 e2 up to xn en. So for example, in R3, any vector 3, negative 1, 4, for example, can be written as 3 times e1 minus plus negative 1 or minus negative e2 plus 4 e3. Because e1 is 1, 0, 0, and e2 is 0, 1, 0, and e3 is 0, 0, 1. So if you multiply, you get 3, 0, 0, uh, plus, if you like, 0, negative 1, 0. plus, if you multiply by 4. Now, if you add these three vectors, you will get 3, negative 1, and 4, which is this one. So any vector in R3 can be written as a linear combination of these three standard basis vectors. And we can do that also in Rn. So you, you understand now, what do we mean by Rn? R to the power n. Remember what we mean by a function. A function is a rule that associates with real elements of a set A one and only one element in a set B. So we have set A, which we call it the domain. And the function F will take this A to exactly one element, which is B or F of A. So B is the image of A under F. This is what we mean by this. Or we can say F of A, the value, the value of A, the value of F at A is B. You can say the value of F at A is B. Or B is F of A. So A is the domain, capital A is the domain, and capital B is the codomain. And the subset of the codomain, there is a subset of the codomain which contains all the images of the elements in the domain. So all f of a, all f of a, uh, we call it the range of f. Set of all images, the range of f. So now we are ready to define what we mean by a transformation. So if t is a function, from Rn to Rm, then we call it a transformation from Rn to Rm. Or it maps an element from Rn to an element from Rm. We write it like this. So this is a function or a transformation from Rn to Rm. It takes an interval. It works on an interval and take it to, takes it to n tuple. If m equals n, we call it, the transformation is called an operator on Rn, because it, it will work from Rn to Rn in that case. So this is what we mean by transformation. It takes Rn to Rm. Now, a matrix transformation, we will have a matrix transformation uh, from Rn to Rm, okay, you will talk about it. Whenever you have a system, look here, this is a system of linear equations. This is the first equation, A11, X1, up to A1, N, Xn equals W1. So we have how many equations? We have M equations. And how many variables? We have N variables. So we can write this system in a matrix notation like this. We know that. Uh, we, we know how to write the system in t like A, B equals, A, X equals B. We studied this. So here, A is the matrix. A, this is the matrix A. And this is X, the variables. And here B or the, the numbers, the constants on the other 
on the other hand side of the equation. So this system can be written like this, because if you multiply in this matrix A times this matrix, you will get this one. So for example, the first row times the first column will give you W1, which is the first equation. So the system can be written in this form. And we can say W equals capital A times X, where W and X are vectors. Uh, X is a vector in Rn, and A works with this vector and change it to a vector in Rm because here we have M components and we here we have N components. So T works from Rn to Rm. How does it work? According to this, we multiply A times X. So we can define TA, TA this is the transformation. We can call it TA instead of T, uh, where A is the matrix associated to T, this matrix. And TA works with X, take X, which is a vector in Rn, to a vector in Rm. But how, how does it work? We multiply A, the matrix A, times this matrix X, and we get the matrix, the vector, W in Rm. So this is what TA does. It's a function. It's a map. We call it matrix transformation. It takes X an element in Rn to TAX or AX or W in Rm. For example, let us consider a matrix transformation from R4 to R3. So the domain is R4 and the code domain is R3. Look here, how many variables are there? The number of variables four, the number of variables they are always taken from the domain. So you can say that you can define this T, you can say that there is a transformation T from R4 to R, three and this transformation works with R4 so it works with X1, X2, X3, X4. This is an element in R4 and it takes it to an element in R3 which is W1, W2, W3 where W1 is defined by this, W2 is defined by this and W3 is defined by this. So we can express this system in a matrix form like we did before. So we write it W1, W2, W3 equals A, which is this the matrix of coefficients, where you write the coefficients of X1 in the first column and the coefficients of X2 in the second column and the coefficients of X3 in the first column, in the third column. and the coefficients of x4 here. Or each, each row in this matrix A represents an equation, 2, negative 3, 1, negative 5. And every column represents a variable. So the number of columns would be equal to the number of variables, and the number of rows would be equal to the number of equations. So if the transformation is from R4 to R3, this matrix would be of the size 3 by 4, 3 rows and 4 columns, times the variables x1, x2, x3, and x4. So this is the matrix form of the system, from which we can see that the transformation can be interpreted as multiplication by the matrix A, this matrix, the matrix A, which is this matrix. And we call it the standard matrix of the system or of the transformation.
Although the image under the transformation TA of any vector in R4 can be found, can be computed or found directly from this equations, from these equations, from this definition, you can just put x1, x2, x3, x4 here and replace it here and find w1, w2, w3. Also, we can do that by matrices by using this definition, TAX equals AX equals W. So we have two methods to find uh, the image of this X, for example, okay? So we can find it like this. We can say that T of X is just T of one, negative three, zero, two. And this will give you W1, W2, W3. So you just go here and uh, multiply two times one because x1 is one, x2 is negative three, minus three times minus three, plus zero, minus five times two. And you will find that the answer is one. And similarly, you can find that uh, the W2 is three and W4, W3 is eight. And you can do that using matrices. So you can say that T A of X, uh, which is this vector equals by definition equals A X. So A is the matrix the standard matrix, this one, two, four, five, negative three, one, negative one, one minus two, four, negative five, one and zero. You multiply this matrix by X, which is one, negative three, zero, two. And you will find the answer. So two plus nine, 11 minus 10 is one. 4 minus 3 is 1, plus 2, that's 3. And 5 plus 3, 8. So 1, 3, 8 is the answer. So you can find it directly from the, from the system or using matrix matrices like this. Now, there are certain properties which that satisfies by TA, the transfer the matrix transformation TA. TA takes the zero element in Rn to the zero vector in Rm, the zero vector to the zero vector. Notice the zero vector here is n tuple, but here it is m tuple. Uh, also, it works if k is a constant, then if you take k outside, TAKU would be equal to K times TAU. And also TAU plus V will be equal to TAU plus TAV and also for the minus, for the subtraction. So in general, you can say if you have K1U1 up to KRUR and you apply TA, you can take these constants out and you can distribute TA with the positive uh, signs so you get this one. So this would be always correct. And for any transformation that satisfies these two properties, TU plus V equals TU plus TV, and TKU equals KTU, this we will call such transformation a linear transformation. And the matrix transformation also satisfies these two, as we have seen here. So, uh, every linear transformation is a matrix transformation and conversely. So when we say linear transformation, we means matrix transformation from Rn to Rm. So a linear transformation or a matrix transformation maps vectors in Rn to vectors in Rm, or you can say also it maps points in Rn to points in Rm. Now, how to find the standard matrix for a matrix transformation, the matrix A? We mentioned 
uh, in the previous example, but let us give you a method here. If you like a strategy, uh, you find the image of the standard basis vectors or Rn. So for example here, if you want to find the standard matrix or this linear transformation, you can find, now it's from R2 to R3, this is R3, from R2 because we have two components, x1, x2, and R2 uh, two variables also, but we have here three rows, so the order of this the matrix A should be 3 by 2. So you can think of what is T E1? And E1 in R2, you are working with R2. So what is E1 in R2? It is 1, 0. So what is T1, 0? Well, T1, 0, according to this definition, is re multiplying, is replacing x1 by 1 and x2 by 0. So x2 will be cancelled, and we will have only uh, the coefficients of x1. So if x1 is 1, I'll have 2, 1, negative 1. And these, in fact, are the, just the coefficients of x1. Also, t of e2, where e2 here is 0, 1, because in r2, e1 is 1, 0, and e2 is 0, 1. And here, you replace x1 by 0 and x1 by 2. So in fact, you are reading the coefficients of x2, which is 1, negative 3, 1. So the matrix A would be the matrix 2, 1, negative 1. This is the first column. And the second column, 1, negative 3, 1. So this is uh, a way to find the matrix A, although you can find it as we mentioned before, just write here the coefficients of x1 and here the coefficients of x2. For the linear transformation in example 4, use standard matrix A to find T14. So T14, TA14 would be A times 1, 4. And A is the standard matrix we obtained here. So 2, 1, negative 1. And 1, negative 3, 1. So when we multiply this matrix by X, which is 1, 4, we get 2 plus 4, that's 6. 1 minus 12 is negative 11. And negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So the image of 1, 4 is this vector. How to find the standard matrix? Well, you have now different ways. So if you like, you can even say like this, that uh, T, uh, x1, x2 as a vector is written as 3, this is the first component, 3x1 plus x2, and the second component is 2x1 minus 4x2. And then you can write it as 3, 1, 2, minus 4, times x1, x2. So you notice that this is A. The matrix A is 3, 2, 1, minus 4. Or you can just look here. And the first component, find the coefficient of x1, then the coefficient of x2. And here, the second component, the coefficient of x1, then the coefficient of x2. You get the standard matrix. Or find T1, 0, and put it the first column. T01 and put it the second column. So whatever uh, you do is correct to find the, the standard matrix. Find the standard matrix A for the linear transformation from R2 to R2 for which, okay, this is a nice 
question, I know that T works on negative one, one and takes to negative five, five, and it works on two, negative one, and it changes it to seven, negative six. So this is from R2 to R2. So how can I find the standard matrix? Well, I'll be able to find the standard matrix if I find standard matrix would be the image of E1 in R2, the first column as the first column, and image of E2 in the second column. So I'd like to know what is T of one and zero, E1, where E1 in R2 is one and zero, and E2 in R2 is zero and one. So I'd like to find T1 and zero, but I don't have T1 and zero. I have T negative one, one, and T2 negative one. What if I can write one and zero as a linear combination of negative one, one, and two, negative one? If I can write E1 as a linear combination, then I can find TE1. TE1 would be T of this. But K1 is a constant. You can take it out and find T of negative 1 and 1, which you have it also here. So let us find K1 and K2. Well, here I have a system. You can write a system. You can say that negative K1 plus 2K2 equals 1. And K1 minus K2 equals 0. And this is a system. You can solve it by any method you like. Well, I can see here that I can solve it by addition. If I add the 2, I'll have 2K2 minus K2. That's K2 equals 1 plus 0. And if K2 is 1, then K1 from the second equation would be also 1. So I know that 1, 0 equals k1, which is 1, equals, in fact, negative 1 over 1 plus 2 minus 1. So t1, 0 would be equal to t of this. But remember, t is a matrix transformation. I can write it TU plus TV, and I can take K out. So this example is important in showing the properties of matrix transformations. So it's in fact T negative 1, 1 plus T 2, negative 1. But he gave me the question, T negative 1, 1, he said it's negative 5 and 5. And T 2, negative 1 is 7 and negative 6. So if you add these two matrices, negative 5 plus 7 is 2, 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So this is TE1. This is TE1. So this is the first column of the standard matrix A of, the, of this matrix transformation. Similarly, try to write 0, 1, which is E2, as a linear combination of these two vectors given in the question. And this equation will give you a system, negative k1 plus 2k2 equals 0, and k1 minus k2 equals negative 1. And I can solve them by addition. equals 1, sorry, 0 and 1. So cancels 2k2 minus k2 is k2, k2 is 1. If I put it here, then k1 would be 1 plus 1, that's 2. So I know that now that 0, 1 is k1, which is 2 times negative 1, 1, plus k2, which is 1 times this one. And you can check your answer. Negative 2 plus 2 is actually 0, and 2 minus 1 is 1. 
So we can write 0, 1 as a linear combination of these two vectors, and then we can find t of 0, 1. And this will give you the second column of the standard matrix. And t works with this fine. You can take t out, 2 out, and write t negative 1 and 1, and then t 2 negative 1. But t negative 1 and 1 is given. It is negative 5 and 5. So I'll have 2 times negative 5 and 5 plus t of 2 negative 1, which is 7 and negative 6. You can find the answer easily because this would be negative 10 plus 7, that's negative 3, and 10 minus 6 is, is 4. And the standard matrix would be 2, negative 1. This is TE1 will represent the first column. And negative 3, 4, this is TE2, which represents the second column. So this shows, this example shows the importance of finding the standard matrix by this method, TE1 and TE2, uh, and also the properties of uh, the matrix transformations. Now we will have some examples about matrix transformations or linear transformations, uh, reflection operators. If, if, you, if there is a point x, y here, and you want to reflect this, this point about the x-axis. So we, we need to do a reflection about the x-axis in R2. What would happen if you reflect this point about the x-axis? The x co coordinate will be the same, but the y will be reflected. It would be negative y. So if, if I have a point, for example, 2 and 3 here, then if you reflect this point about the x-axis, the coordinates would be 2 and negative 3. Okay, so T X Y is X and negative Y. This this reflection operator takes X to X and Y to negative Y. So what would be the standard matrix of this uh, of this transformation, linear transformation? You can look here and notice that in the first component I have X only but no Y. So the coefficient of X is one and the coefficient of y is 0 in the first component. In the second component, there is no x. x is 0, but the coefficient of y is negative 1. So this would be the standard matrix of the reflection about the x-axis. Also, you can find it by finding t e1. t10 would be 1, 0, and t01 would be 0 and negative 1. So 1, 0 would be the first uh, column and zero negative one would be the second column. So this is the standard matrix of the reflection about the x-axis. And you can notice that uh, y is, is negative here. Okay, y is multiplied by minus, but x is doesn't change. Uh, you can do the same if the reflection is about the y-axis, then this, this is negative x and y course. So x will be changed to a negative x, and this would be the standard matrix, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, standard matrix for the reflection about the y-axis. If you reflect about the line y equals x, any point x, y, when you reflect about the line y equals x, x and y interchanges. So the point would be y-x. So this would be the transformation. T takes x, y to y, x. So we will have y, 0, 1, x, 1, 0. So this would be the standard matrix for this transformation or operators because from R2 to R2. From R3 to R3, we can reflect about a plane. So when you reflect this point x, y, z in the, in the space about the plane x, y, this is the plane x, y, the ground. So it would go down and z would be negative. x, y will keep the same. So about x, y plane, x, y doesn't change. The, the one that changes is the z. So t, x, y, z would be x, y, negative z. And this would be the standard matrix because 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, but 0, 0, negative 1. 
and the standard matrix for the reflection about uh, well this is the xz plane is is this one y would be negative and this would be the standard matrix and the reflection about uh, y z plane okay would be this one x would be negative and this would be the standard matrix. So these are reflection operators, examples of matrix or linear transformations. Also, we can talk about projections. If I have a point x, y, and I project this point on the x-axis, onto the x-axis, so what would happen if you bring this point down here onto the x-axis? So the x-coordinate is the same, but the y-coordinate would be zero because any point on the x-axis has y-coordinates equal to zero. So Txy would be x0. This would be the definition of the orthogonal projection onto the x-axis. And this would be the matrix because coefficient of x here is one and coefficient of y is zero. And in the second component, there is no x and y, so zero, zero. So this would be the standard matrix for the projection onto the x-axis. Projection, the same point, projecting the same point onto the y-axis will make x zero and will maintain the y component. So Txy would be zero y, and this would be the standard matrix representing this uh, linear transformation. Also in R3, if, if we want to uh, project the point orthogonally, onto the xy plane, then the, the z will be zero. Uh, if we uh, project onto the xz plane, then the y would be zero. And if we project uh, the point onto the yz plane, then the x would be zero, and this would be the matrix representing that projection. Some exercises find the domain and codomain of the transformation T defined by this formula. We'll notice here how many variables x1 and x2. So this will give you the domain. The domain is R2 because you have two variables. And here, uh, how many components are there? There is a comma here. So there are two components. So the codomain is also R2. Here, how many variables are there? Three variables. So the domain is R3. And the codomain comes from here. Notice this is the first component, comma, the second component. We have only two components, so the codomain is R2. So you can say that T in, in part B works from R3 to R2. It takes an element in R3, three components, and gives it two components in R2. Find the standard matrix for the transformation, this transformation. Well, I taught you uh, different methods. I'll do now this one, the quick one. Just what are the coefficients of, uh, or write, write the first equation. Write the first equation. The coefficient of x1 is 7, here 2, here negative 8. And the second equation, I have 0, negative 1, 5. And the third equation, 4, 7, negative 1. So this is the standard matrix for this transformation, or the coefficient matrix. Find the standard matrix for this transformation. Well, how many I have here? This is the first component, and this is the second component, and this is the third component. So it should be 3 by 4. The standard matrix here should be 3 by 4 because I have four uh, variables. So I have four columns. And I have three equations. So write the first component. Coefficient of x1 is 7. Coefficient of x2 is 2. Negative 1, then 1. This is 4. Yeah, And the second component, 2, 3. So there is no 1. Coefficient of x2 is 1, coefficient of x3 is 1, 0. And the last component, just negative x1. So all, all others are zeros. So this is the standard uh, matrix 
for uh, this transformation. Find the standard matrix for the transformation and use it to compute Tx, where X is this one. Okay, so A, the standard matrix would be, I have three components here, uh, three variables and one, two, three, so it's a three by three matrix. Okay, so I have two negative one and one, and uh, there is no x1, but x2, x3 has coefficients 1. And then I have 0, which means everywhere is zeros. So what would be t a of 2, 1, negative 3? Well, it would be a times 2, 1, negative 3, according to the definition. So 2, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, 0. 1, 1, 0 times 2, neg 1, negative 3. You multiply and find the answer. So 4 minus 1 is 3 minus 3. That's uh, 0. And uh, 0 plus 1 minus 3 is negative 2 and 0 at the end. So this is Tax or Tx. Find Tax and express your answer in matrix form. Well, I have A, so Tax would be A X, so negative 1, 3, 2, 1, 0, 5 should be multiplied by negative 1, 1, and 3, and the answer would be this is a 2 by 3, and this is a 3 by 1, so the answer would be 2 by 1. So negative times negative positive 1 plus 2, that's 3. And negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 plus 15, that's 13. So 3 and 13 would be the answer. Use matrix multiplication to find the reflection of negative 1 and 2 about the y-axis. Well, about the y-axis, what would be the transformation? T, X, Y would be, uh, X will be negative and Y will keep the same if you make a reflection about the Y axis. So A would be the matrix uh, zero, uh, sorry, negative one, because X is negative, negative one and zero, and here zero, one. So this is the matrix A. So to find the reflection of negative one and two, using matrix multiplication, I need to multiply this matrix times negative one and two, and the answer would be one and two. So in fact, negative one and two, when reflected about the y-axis, it would be one and two. Uh, find the reflection about the x, the y-z plane. Well, the y-z plane, if you are reflecting this point x, y, z about the y, z plane, then the x would be uh, negative. And according to this, the transfer, the matrix transformation would be uh, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So using matrix multiplication, I multiply this matrix A times the vector 2, negative 5, and 3 to see what would happen if we reflect this vector about the yz plane. And it would be negative 2, negative 5, and 3. So when reflected about the yz plane, this would be the reflection. This would be the point. This was the last uh, question. I hope you enjoyed listening to uh, the recording of this section.